Okay, so first of all, welcome, welcome everybody. And I'm really so glad that you've joined us. And, you know, this is our first meeting of the ZOA Book Club, which we hope will be an antidote to social distancing. And we're just so happy that all of us are here together. Um, and we're very honored to have as our first um, online book club, the author Ben Weingarten speaking about his book, which we have right here. Uh, Ilan Omar, American ingrate Ilan Omar, and the progressive Islamist takeover of the Democratic Party, and it examines uh, the serious threat po po poised by uh, posed by Omar's anti-Israel and anti-American agenda. Um, I'll give you tell you a little bit about Ben. He's a senior fellow at the London Center for Policy Research, fellow at the Claremont Institute, and senior contributor to the Federal Federalist. Um, he was selected as a 2019 Novak Fellow of the Fund for American Studies. Um, he's currently working on a book on U.S.-China policy, so maybe he'll come back um, when that's done. And he's the uh, founder and CEO of Change Up Media. Um, he's a graduate of Columbia University and has, um, I guess, a website, benweingarten.com, and Twitter, B -H at bhweingarten. And... Uh, we're really honored to have him here. So I think what we'll do, we're gonna have him speak about his book and the different themes in it for about 15 minutes. And then we'll open it up to discussion, comments. You don't have to necessarily ask a question. If you just have a comment you wanna make, that's fine too. Just, you know, I just wanna ask people um, to make it relatively brief so that everyone has a chance to speak. And uh, Ben, please go ahead, thanks. Well, uh, let me start by thanking you, Liz, for kindly arranging this event. And I'd also like to thank Mort Klein and ZOA for sponsoring it and for your invaluable efforts on all manner of critical issues. And of course, a hag sameach to everyone participating today. Uh, this is a, a timely period during which to be discussing this book, American Ingrate, because it shares a theme that's common to Passover. And that is the theme of liberty versus tyranny. On this point, I wish to raise a few relevant stories that transpired during this pandemic that you may have missed. The first is that the front runner for the nomination for president in the Democratic Party, Joe Biden, said he shared a common vision with socialist Bernie Sanders. The second is that the Democratic Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, sought to cynically use the third round of so-called coronavirus relief legislation to pass a raft of radically leftist measures having nothing to do with getting America back on its feet from a communist China created but essentially government induced economic coma. And the third is that Ilhan Omar has led the charge along with Bernie Sanders for whom she serves as campaign co-chair in the all important 2020 state of Minnesota in a de facto Iranian, malocracy-led, national Iranian, American Council-backed information operation, as ZOA has highlighted, to seek to also cynically use the coronavirus crisis to lift sanctions from the most strategically significant and lucrative sectors of Iran's economy. This would provide a lifeline to that tyrannical regime, which is today tottering. That is one of Ilhan Omar's main priorities, which ties in quite nicely to this book, but poorly for America, is that during this pandemic, a top priority was the health and well being of the Khomeinists, tyranny personified. She's serving as an unregistered foreign agent for totalitarians with the blood of thousands of innocents, including Americans and Israelis on their hands, and that has been at war with us since 1979. But Omar was not alone in this. True to form, given Joe Biden's pronouncements on his commonalities with Bernie Sanders, this past week, he too endorsed the idea of lifting sanctions on Iran. And as for Speaker Pelosi, the major force advocating for using the coronavirus crisis to pass this litany of radically leftist measures was the party's progressive wing, led by, among others, Ilhan Omar. And that effort continues apace for however many pieces of relief legislation we ultimately have. Omar's support of socialism at home and surrender abroad is not only an invitation for tyranny, but a promoter of it. And that invitation for and promotion of tyranny is rooted in a belief in America's inherent evil, and that social justice requires turning our purportedly evil values, principles, and institutions on their heads, including, of course, 
the alliance with Israel. These sentiments increasingly dominate the Democratic Party, illustrated by Omar's rise. And that is really the first of three major points that I wish to make today and that I expound upon in great detail in this book, American Ingrate. So let me restate that first one clearly. The Democratic Party is increasingly the party of Bernie Sanders and Ilhan Omar. And as I will address momentarily, the party's shift on Jews and the Jewish state is an essential piece of evidence for this. American Ingrate argues that Ilhan Omar's meteoric rise from a privileged background, which many don't know about, but which I expose in the book, in Somalia, to a Kenyan refugee camp, to Minnesota community organizer, to Minnesota state representative, and now the pinnacle of power as a congresswoman on the House Foreign Affairs Committee authoring a battery of bills that Ben Rhodes calls the new progressive baseline for foreign policy and able to act with total impunity, having stared down Nancy Pelosi and won, parallels that of her party's leftward trajectory. But we see it reflected in just how far left the Democratic presidential field has been. We see it reflected in the fact that in her right mind, Speaker Pelosi and many so-called establishment Democrats, including Gerald Nadler and Elliot Engel, would have never supported the impeachment charade had the squad not existed because the squad posed a threat to the establishment's power. And we see it reflected in the fact that the Congressional Progressive Caucus has grown in membership 16 folds in a generation from just six members when it was founded in the early 1990s, led by Bernie Sanders, then a congressman, to today with just under 100 members, comprising more than 40% of the Democrat majority in the House. So I want to just reiterate this point. It is not a small minority. It is not a few members of the House. It is increasingly the entire Democratic Party under the spell of progressivism. And we see it, as I explore at great length in the book, in the so-called wokeification of liberal elites, who, of course, disproportionately influence the Democratic Party and sit atop many of our critical institutions, not just as government bureaucrats, but in the academy, media, popular culture, and in the boardrooms of the business world comprising woke capital. This is not the Democratic Party of JFK or Scoop Jackson, or Daniel Patrick Moynihan, or even Bill Clinton. The Democratic Party is increasingly dominated by progressivism and progressives. And Ilhan Omar both symbolizes this progressive rise and is a leader of it in her own right, having amassed substantial power, as I'll get to in a minute, at a dramatic clip. She is the tip of a very poisonous spear, elevated by a party that increasingly celebrates intersectionalism, identity politics, and virtue signaling through America bashing. And those are the essential parts of the Ilhan Omar persona. She describes herself as an intersectional feminist. That brings me to my second point, which is that as the Democratic Party has gone leftward, like its woke elite cadre, it has embraced Jew hatred. The party's embrace of Ilhan Omar represents its embrace and legitimization of this Jew hatred, which as I argue at length in the book, serves as a proxy for its embrace and legitimization of all manner of tyrannical policies. To state it another way, where we find Jew hatred, we typically find tyranny, whether of the communist variety or the Nazi variety. As a party goes on Jews and the Jewish state, so too typically will it go on all manner of other issues. But the Jews and the Jewish state represent a particularly important litmus test because they are the canary in the coal mine for freedom. And as I put it in the book with respect to so-called anti-Zionism, it's not solely that seeking to undermine and delegitimize Israel, a nation representing the first line of defense of Western civilization against Islamist tyranny is decidedly antithetical to America's interest. It's that hatred of the Jewish state is indistinguishable from, and indeed a mask for, hatred of the Jewish people and their values, which are foundational to Judeo-Christian Western values and Western civilization itself. And this is why Rep. Omar's views and the left's willingness to kowtow to her over them transcend matters of just individual bigotry or international relations, but at their root concern the perpetual struggle between civilization and barbarism. Jew hatred often masquerading as hatred of the Jewish state in the post-Holocaust era, I argue, is the glue that holds the burden